There's a bit of a tropical storm coming through this weekend. We have a few things to fix before we set sail. I'm going to try and install one of these. Oh, look at that! There's just a whale sitting under our boat. This whole area I'm standing on didn't used to be here. The whole roof of his workshop had just completely fallen in under the weight of the ash. Lightning and wow. everything was just going crazy. The whole place like, was just ripping up. If you've been following our journey recently, you'll have seen us sailing to Guadeloupe in the Eastern Caribbean. We made friends with the wildlife, laughed at some flamingos, went diving beneath the surface at Jacques Cousteau's Marine Park, and even toured an island on this rather spectacular golf buggy we named Enrique. The views in this place are out of this world, and last week we hiked through the rainforest to reach an absolutely stunning waterfall. So today is officially our rest day. We try and do one of these before we set sail anyway. Uh, however, we also live in a boat, so there's no rest. Uh, so instead of chilling out and doing nothing, watching movies, we have a few things to fix before we set sail, hopefully for St. Lucia tomorrow morning. Um, the key one for me at least, have to get done before we start is fixing our furling line. Um, now you may remember when we left St. Martin, we discovered pretty much just after we lifted anchor that our furling line had chafed through almost entirely, which meant for those of you who don't do sailing things, a furling line basically controls that skinny blue sail back there. Uh, when it's out, it's the line that keeps it out or keeps it rolled up. So as the storms get higher, we can make that sail smaller by using the furling line to kind of roll it up. Um, however, when it chafes through, that means the sail will just completely come out full size. And if we're in big winds, that could be really bad news because uh, that's a huge amount of power in that sail. So we sailed all the way here to find out that our uh, little clutch was still causing chafe, even though we thought we'd fixed it. So this little guy here, this little swinging arm, seems to be cutting its way through this nice white rope. So we end up with chafe which isn't great when you've just spent $100 replacing the rope to find that within a week, it's gonna be trash, pretty much. So, I'm gonna try and install one of these, which is usually called a clutch or a jammer, and uh, hopefully this guy won't cut up our rope quite as much. The only thing is, Leopard didn't design this boat to have one of these for that particular rope, so I have to work out where to put it on the deck and then get it all mounted before we leave tomorrow. As you might expect, boat project. Never gonna go to plan. Basic idea of these, if you don't already know, there is this big levery arm. Uh, the rope goes in the front, comes out the back, the rope are line. But the rope goes through the, the clutch, as it's called, and then inside, you've got this toothed wheel. And basically, the arm levers back on a spring, that toothed wheel. And then deep inside, and you probably won't be able to see it, but there's a small toothed base running along here. So some jaggedy teeth inside there. So when the wheel comes down, the two wheels, the tooth base and the wheel clamp together and the rope in between can't go anywhere. That's the idea. The way it's supposed to work, I should be able to relatively easily pull the line through. And that's not happening. So it made me wonder what's going on. So I opened it up and found out that the tooth base that I talked about, well, the whole time, you might not be able to see this, but see how you, this isn't a perfect circle because the toothed base is creating a shadow. Effectively, the minute the rope goes in here, the diameter of that hole is cut in half and the line is always sitting on that base with all those teeth. So every time you move the line back and forth with this open, it's actually cutting away with these teeth like a saw cutting away on the rope. So this isn't how they're supposed to work as far as I know. This might work for a really skinny line like six mil, but for what we're doing with 12 mil rope, I don't really want it chafing my rope every time I use it. So um, I think we're gonna take it back and see if we can persuade them to trade us for something a bit bigger. Um, of course, the shopping question don't do refunds. They only do store credit. 
which means we've already spent the money, which means they have to have the product we need or we're buying, spending money on something we don't need. So instead of resting today, we're now going to get in the dinghy and go all the way back to the chandelier we got this from. And in very broken French, we're going to try and get one that works. So they had no more clutches, none that would fit anyway. So instead we uh, reinvested, let's say that. So I got myself an extra 35 meters of furler line, which is pretty much sacrificial at this stage. Uh, and then I grabbed a couple of shackles and some useful bits and pieces. So um, yeah, always good to have spares, I guess. Just a bit of a shame that we hadn't planned on spending that extra cash. So yeah, we'll do a bit of maths when we get back, hopefully, and make it work. There's a bit of a tropical storm coming through this weekend, so we've looked at all the weather models and we've decided that at 10 o'clock this morning is the best time to leave. It is currently one minute to 10, so we're gonna make a move right now. It wasn't long until the winds died off and the rain arrived, so we motored down the west coast of Dominica and kept ourselves entertained by watching the birds fish in front of our bows. And then a real treat turned up. Wait, what? Oops, I might be in trouble here. Yes? When did dolphins happen? <laughs> um, what? You remember how you were asleep and you'd been really tired on your shift? We have a rule. <laughs> I tried to wake you up. I promise. Sure you did. I like, I shook you. Oh, did you? Said your name. Did so you Ian, really? Ian, there's 50 dolphins outside. Do you want to come 50? see them? 50? Oh, come on. That's disgusting, that's so unfair. <laughs> I just did that. But it's fine, it got better. It sure did. It got better? Mm-hmm. Okay, hit play. Hit play! As we continued down past Martinique, we suddenly spotted these guys. More further out that way too. There's loads of them. Absolutely loads. They've all turned right to come see us. Yeah. Whoa, right down here. Wow. There's just a whale sitting under our boat. Baby's over here. He's just sitting on the surface. <laughs> and while these beautiful creatures did stay with us for probably over an hour, we did have to turn around, get back on course, and keep heading south. Today we are continuing our journey down to St. Vincent. So we've got about 20 knots of wind, beautifully calm sea state. So it should be a really nice sail. We just hopefully we'll get there before midnight. If you haven't seen our last episode when we came to St. Vincent, uh, a special episode just before season two, I visited St. Vincent with Brooks from What's on Water just after the volcano erupted a few months ago. So we were delivering personal solar lights to people who are still living up in the evacuation zone without power. 
So we're really excited to get back this week to touch base with some of the people that we met last time and see how they're getting on. So I realized we've never actually explained our fishing setup. Um, so you see a lot of boats out here, they've got big fancy fishing rods with big reels on them and uh, they usually trail like 50 hooks behind them and things like that. We don't know how to fish. So we've decided to go for the simplest option, which uh, a friend of ours, Rene, up in uh, St. Martin, he runs a shop called Island Water World. Uh, shout out, Rene is amazing. He pitched this idea to us, which is nicknamed the Cuban Yo-Yo. Um, and I think when you see it set up, you'll understand why. Basically, it's a hand reel, so it's, it's a black plastic cylinder with some grip on it, uh, a bit of rope and a bungee cord, and then the heavyweight fishing line and our lure lives on the end of that. The theory is that if a fish does come and bite on our fishing line here, it'll pop free from that clip, and then when it does so, it tensions up the string and the bungee cord and makes a bit of a loud noise so we know that something's on the end of the line. At that point, we can reel it back in and hopefully pick up a fish. That all said, I think so far we have caught three fish to date and we've only actually managed to bring one in once. <laughs> uh, we've had fish jump off the line. Uh, we had one fairly dramatic fish jump off the line, which I'm still a bit bitter about. And then we had one that we managed to catch. So we're kind of fingers crossed that we might get something today, but who knows? Normally, going down Caribbean islands, a lot of people stay on the leeward side of the islands, the downwind side, and that gets you shade and it slows you down a bit and it's very flat and calm. We're gonna go down the windy side, the Atlantic side, just because we figure we've never done it before and it might look kind of interesting. Um, also, more interesting for us is that it's the windy side, the windward side of the islands, that saw the most destruction from the volcano. So it'll be really interesting to see what that looks like from the sea, and then hopefully we can go see it from the land. Well, that didn't last long. We've had to put the engines on. Um, I've also made this beautiful sunshade because it is baking hot today and we've definitely both got sunburned. We tried to fly the spinnaker for a bit, but the winds were even too light to, to keep that full. So we just had to give up. However, to make up for our disappointment, just as we were bringing the spinnaker back down, we suddenly saw whales and we had another visit from three pilot whales. They just came right under the bow of our boat and then they were swimming in circles around the port hull. It was just amazing. No, he's right in front of us. Today we are meeting up with Basil, who I've never met before, and he is going to take us back up north where Briny went in our SDG special. Things are kind of beginning, we think, to return to normal, and uh, yeah, we're just kind of interested to know what life is like now, and uh, if people are just as if nothing's ever happened, or if people are still working their way back to normality, uh, as normal as things can be these days, I guess. So I've not done this drive before, so I haven't got any reference as to how far north we are. But I'm seeing a lot of green still. I think the, the, the ash has been very good with the trees, them, in terms of making them growing and getting really green very fast. Right, yeah, so it's been like fertilizing yeah. almost. Ah, that's cool. And then, so you were saying like the, the water and the electricity had been cut off obviously during the volcano. That in, in terms of restoration for everywhere in what was the red zone in the north there, is that all back up and running now or is it still kind of patchy? Yeah, or? yeah it, it, it's back up and running now. Perfect. It's That's back it. up and running. I, again, I have no reference, but the videos yeah. that Brian sent to me, you were like bouncing your way through yeah. ash the whole way, that right? Was before now, it's back to yeah. the road. Back to proper road. It's amazing.
We stopped at the Rabica Bridge again, which was kind of iconic when the volcano first erupted. And uh, they've now replaced all of the bridge, rebuilt it. And you can see a lot of the greenery, a lot of the plants and the trees and the crops and things have grown back and are getting really lush again. But you can just see the amount of ash in some places is just incredible. So when I was here a few months ago, there were a couple of diggers and trucks trying to dig out all of the ash from the riverbed here so that the water could come down and get through to the sea. And they're still working on it now. You can see the height difference from when I was here last time and they're kind of halfway up the mountainside. So yeah, it's just an absolutely huge amount of work. And so presumably nobody's living in uh, the emergency shelters anymore. Um, yeah, there's still some people who live in some of the shelters still. There's still some? Yeah, because the house has been destroyed. Wow. So they have to have them in the shelters. Not very much. And some of them, the government, I think, put them in some like, private homes. And of most people who've moved home, like they've chosen to come back up yeah, because north? Because I know the government were trying to sort of say, oh, maybe you could live in the south. And everyone was just like, well, that's not home, so. Home is home. Yeah, exactly. This can't go very high. How much work it's been for people. Like, a lot of work. I just say, like, everywhere we turn, there's mountains of ash everywhere. And people cleared the roads, they re rebuilt their houses where they patched it. Wow. So we've come back to Basil's house and when I was last here, the whole roof of his workshop had just completely fallen in under the weight of the ash. There were bits of it sticking up through the, the ash and the sand that was on the floor. But I didn't even know that this was a concrete floor underneath because I was just walking around on the dust and everything. And now he's like cleared the whole area, rebuilt the roof and it just looks amazing. And so much work here. Those are tools are inside the shed so uh -huh. they kind of get protected from from that. Falling and at one point, we had a lot of ash um, build up to all here. Oh, really? Yeah, so we had to step over to go <laughs> inside, inside here. You hope you don't lift anything heavy. <laughs> yeah, it was quite a little bit of stuff. You can still see the, yeah, the ash thing on it. Yeah. Twist and bend, punk yeah. and straighten, because I couldn't afford to buy new ones. Well, too, right? And, and you just done it before. I have just, yeah? all these are new governors just bought. Yeah, it's still shiny. Yeah, but because they all messed up, I had to try and reuse them one way or the other. You've done a great job though, like yeah. it looks fantastic. But it's good because the trees are growing real fast in it as well. It's then like enriching all of the soil down there yeah. for your fruit trees. Because this um, fruit tree just sprung up like... Oh really? Yeah. We had like a song of a jet in the mountain. Man, that's gonna creep you out. Yeah, and it's like <laughs> nobody knows where the song is coming from. <laughs> but yeah, I was... You know, thinking about maybe it's a jet is passing or something. Yeah, yeah, expect something to go right. Then we were there and then suddenly we hear this loud explosion. Yeah, and then we look up in the sky, it's like ash. Just a huge bit, column. Up. Oh, that's terrifying. Yeah. It's just skin crawling, doesn't it? <laughs> it's start getting a bit darkish. And everybody start running, everybody start moving, everybody start getting ready to get away, do something. To right. <laughs> it's Armageddon, right? Yeah, that was a scary time because everybody just like, try it out, get out of it. People start jumping the truck. Jump. Everybody's no jumping the truck with the baggage and children and everybody who was, you know, and then we start like, We'll fit you, we can fit you, keep going. Yeah. yeah. At one point we have like oh, 50 something people. What? Truck. How? Because <laughs> people just sitting and scrumming and everybody just want to get out. Oh my goodness, that's so, crazy. Yeah, yeah, but everybody wanted to get out and there wasn't any transportation. The government was supposed to send transportation in the early, but that didn't happen. So I had to do what I have to do. Yeah, Move that's people, right. Go take people down, come back, get some more people. I think it's Move like, again. was there an element when you're turning around to come straight back up again? You're seeing this in, yeah. in snippets. You're seeing it's getting worse. Yeah. That's got to be freaking you out when you get down to yeah, Kingston, you're like, I'll turn around, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I think most of the people up to Belair. So, okay. drop out the school, turn around, and back up the road again. Each yeah. time you're going up thinking, is this the last time? <laughs> <laughs> and I did that, um, like a few chips, and a lot of people were very grateful for that. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. And what's happening tonight, you can see a lot of shoot of lightning and wow. everything was just going crazy. The whole place like it was just ripping up. It's a, it's a experience. It's a real experience by itself. For sure. That's crazy. It's history right there. Come to Sandy Bay again and you can see there's been so much rebuilding going on. But one thing I didn't realize last time is that this whole area I'm standing on didn't used to be here. This is all sand and volcanic ash from the eruptions. 
So I'm probably standing about eight meters higher than ground level used to be. And the whole area has just come rushing down the mountainside. It's been cleared out from the community. And it's now big enough and strong enough and thick enough that you can drive on it. It's like this whole new piece of land. It's just insane amounts. We saw so many buildings that were still completely uninhabitable and riverbeds that are still covered in ash and evidence of the volcano is everywhere. But on the drive home, Basil pointed out all the crops that are growing again and there are just signs of hope everywhere. artistic coming off the leaf as well. <laughs> That's really cool. So full face underneath mouth open? Yeah absolutely. <laughs> I'm not quite as prepared with my bottles to drink stuff as you are. It's like what out. <laughs> I'm not sure that I would want to come and do that every day. It good. It's been amazing to come back to St. Vincent and see how the island has changed since the volcano erupted. And we are so lucky to have been given just a glimpse into how people here are recovering. Hey, across the boat. Safety first. If I do a, like a, I was going to say handstand, cartwheel. <laughs> That's a piton. <laughs> <laughs> 